say a balanced search tree, what I mean is a search tree that will automatically keep itself balanced. Um, before we get there, let's talk about what balanced means. The height of binary search tree is sensitive order, um, obviously. And so uh, the minimum height of a search tree, BST, with n elements is log base 2 of n plus 1. Um, the maximum height is n. And just stack them all in one big long vine. So we don't like that. This is an example of a bad binary search tree because it doesn't give us any of the benefit. This is an example of a good one with, with all the same data. So we will start with something called a 2 3 tree. Now, a 2 3 tree is not a binary tree. A 2 3 tree is defined as a tree of nodes. Obviously, most trees, all trees are nodes. And each node can have either no children, zero, a leaf, like these guys at the bottom, or the node can have two children or three children. There is no such thing as a node in here with one child. It's either two or three. If it has two children, it's called a two node. Right here, this is a two node, two children. If it has three children, it's a three node. This is a three node. This is a three node. Now, the <coughs> nice thing about a two, three tree is the algorithms we use to insert and remove things from it keep it balanced automatically. Uh, let me back up here, though, for a second on the binary search tree. Of course, we, we all agree this one's better than this one, right? And if I was to insert a bunch of elements if I was inserting them in order, so I have the values 1, 2, 3, 4, or in this case 10 through 70, and I insert them in order, I am going to get something like this. How would I go about with a binary search tree? How would I go about actually balancing it? So the very first thing I do is I get element 10, and I insert it at the top. Next thing I do, I get element 20. Where should I put it? There's only one place, so that's over here. When I get element 30, where should I put it? You have to detect the fact that it's unbalanced first. Yeah, I would have I would I would say, well, it has to go over here, but now I'm unbalanced. So how do I rebalance the tree? Well in this case I think I just grab the middle element and reshape it, right? It falls down. Um, but then when I add the 40, I'm gonna want to add the 40 if 20 is my root, so I've got 10, 20, 30, I'm gonna want to add the 40 over here. And there's nothing I can really do to balance that back out. I could grab one of the other nodes make it the root, but now I'm just kind of going to get an A-frame, no matter what I do. So, and that's not really balanced. It just gives me half the line instead of a full line. So when trees, binary search trees were first developed, and this was a long time ago, um, I think it was back in the 60s and 70s, probably more like the 70s, but um, maybe before that. But when it was, when these were first developed as a data structure, people quickly recognize this problem, and they tried to develop algorithms to try and balance these trees. And in fact, we'll get to AVL trees at the very end, and that was one of these early attempts to try and balance a tree algorithmically, or by rebalancing every time we insert now, oh, are we balanced or not? Not balanced, then let's try and get it that way. Um, but I think it doesn't take much imagination on your part to realize it's actually pretty tricky. It's just nothing but a whole bunch of special cases all the time of trying to rebalance things. And that was just for insert. Now consider remove. Right? When you remove, it's the same problem again. So, or worse. So that's why some intelligent person came up with the idea of a 2-3 tree. 2-3 tree, as we'll see, somehow, magically, but we'll tell you what the magic is, but magically, it keeps the tree balanced. Now, I do want to remind you, I mentioned this briefly last week, but you might not remember what balanced means. Balanced means that um, for any pair of no leaf nodes in the tree, the difference of height is no more than one. So in this case, it's balanced, of course, because all the leaf nodes have a height of one, two, three. Um, if I had one more leg down here, then, well, that wouldn't be allowed because you have no challenge. But two more legs down here, then I would have a height four, height three, I'm still balanced. 
But if I had yet another leg, I'd have some fives, I'd have some threes. The difference is two, not one, so not balanced. Okay, so that's the definition. Just keep that in mind as we're going along. You'll see how this two, three tree is going to maintain the balance. <coughs> so, again, a two, three tree either has three children or two children. Also, the nodes contain multiple values. For a two node, and this, is, this confuses me all the time, a two node has one value, but it has two children. So the two node gets its, it gets its number from the children, not from the values. So in this case, I would have one value in here. Everything over here is less than this. Everything over here is greater than this. In the case of a three node, I have two values. And it's pretty much what you think. This is less than this, is less than this, is less than this, is less than this. So they just kind of fit in order. But it has two values, which is why you get three children. Come on. Okay, does that make sense? It does it suggest you can extend it too? If you need to. So here's a picture to show you a little bit better, and I'll go back to the other text. So here's a two node, it has a single value, S, meaning small. And then items less than S are over there, items greater than S are over here. Here is a three node that has two values, small and large, and I have small, less than small, small, between small and large, there's in this subtree, large, and then greater than large is over here. Okay? So it should it makes sense intuitively, right? To understand that, that pattern. Okay. So we're going to talk about how we insert. So placing data items in nodes of a 2, 3 tree. A 2 node has two children. It must contain a single data item following this, oops, following this rule. A 3 node has three children, and it contains the three items following this rule. A leaf may contain either one or two data items. Um, can a leaf contain zero data items? No. The only one Because no, then the node doesn't exist. Yeah. Right? Well, so the root node. Notice also that um, I again I want to emphasize there are no nodes with one child. Nodes either have zero children, in which case it's a leaf, or it has two or three children. There are no nodes with one child. Um, so, here is an example of a 2 3 tree with a bunch of data in it. Numbers uh, looks like 10 through 160. So, it's a little weird looking, but it's fairly systematic. I've got a 3 node here. This is less than this, is less than this, is less than this, is less than this. And I have a similar thing with my 2 node this, this, this. So even though it's a little bit odd looking, it is pretty systematic. You all good with this so far? How do I traverse a two, three tree? In particular, I want to do in order. It's just like you would think. It's very intuitive. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm calling an in order traversal with my two, three tree. Oh, I'm sorry, right here, two, three tree. If um, the tree's root node is a leaf, then I just visit the leaf and I'm done. Um, leaf, remember, has no children, right? If the um, root that I'm looking at of my two, three tree I passed in, if the root has two data items, then what type of node am I if I have two data items? Three. The three node. Two data items, three children. So what I do is I do an in-order traversal in order traversal of the left subtree, then I visit my first data item, then I do the middle tree, then I visit my second data item, then I do the third, or the, um, yeah, the third subtree. Make sense? When I call that recursively, then I'm either going to have a leaf, or I'm going to have a two node, or a three node. If I have a three node, then I do this again, and I keep recursing in at each level down. Now, if I didn't have two data items, if I only had one data item, one data item, two children, it's a two node, then I call in order on the left, then I 
print my own data, then I call in order on the right. So this, of course, looks just like a binary tree. But if all my nodes were two nodes, that would mean all my nodes had two children, and then yes, it's a binary tree. Um, but a two, three tree allows you to have those three nodes in there as well. So finding an item, it's just like uh, traversing, or very similar. I'm gonna find item in this tree. I'm looking for that target. So if the target is in the root node, great. Otherwise, um, <coughs> that is not very good, there we go. Um, so if target is in the node, then I return that data. Otherwise, if it is a leaf, then I say I didn't find it. So if it was a leaf and it's not there, then I didn't find it. So I throw this exception here. Otherwise, if I have two data items, that is, I'm a three node, two data items, three children, three node. So I'm a three node, then if the target is smaller than R, um, the first item, okay, yeah, that's one. If the target is less than the smaller item in R, I have the small and the large, and so if the target is less than the small one, then I go into that tree. If it's between these two, I go into this tree, and if it's greater than this one, I go into that tree. If it's a single data item, that means it's a two node, then I just do kind of like a binary search, or a binary search tree. So doing a recursive search inside of a two, three tree is really not any different than doing that recursive search in a binary search tree. Do you guys all agree with that? Mm -hmm. We've got this extra step of dealing with three nodes, but the process conceptually makes a lot of sense because you're just checking three branches instead of two. So when I search a two, three tree, it's possible to search a two, three tree and the sh shortest, <coughs> shortest binary search tree with approximately the same efficiency because a binary search tree with n nodes cannot be shorter than that. Right, we would read the minimum height of a binary search tree within nodes is log base two of n plus one. And a two, three tree within nodes cannot be taller than this. Now, I haven't convinced you of that yet, right? Because I haven't even shown you how you delete or insert things. So you are just believing me right now when I tell you that a two, three tree will always be balanced. And since it will always be balanced, then the it will always have um, max height of log base two of n plus one. So you have approximately the same efficiency because you're guaranteed to always have the minimum height of the equivalent binary search tree. And then each node is going to have at most two values, but a lot of them will just have one value. So you're really close to the same amount of efficiency. And what you lose in having to do an extra comparison when you have three values, two values left, one. If you lose there, you gain by the fact that you're guaranteed to always be minimal time. So, this is a balanced binary search tree, BST. This is not 2 3 tree, this is a BST. And then this is the same data in a 2 3 tree. What's the height of this tree? Four. This was a little bit shorter, which makes sense because I can hold two values in some of these nodes instead of just one. And then over here, I can only hold one value each. All right? Yeah. How do you choose which nodes get two values, though? Yeah, we'll get there. Um, it's part of the answer. You don't get to randomly choose. Okay. <laughs> now, this is what's interesting. These are the same trees. So look, rememberize that shape. That's that shape there. So this is what happens after I start with my nice balanced binary search tree and I add the values 39 through 32. So consider back here, I have 39 I want to add. Less than 60, greater than 30, less than 50, less than 49. Nope, put it right there. Now I want to add 38. Goes right there, 37, 36, 35, 34. So that's why I end up with Mr. Vine. 
we want to insert things in that order. Now, we haven't seen it yet, but when I use the insert algorithm on a 2, 3 tree, this is what I end up with. Now notice, what's the height of this tree? A lot. <laughs> 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 12. And the height of this tree is 4. Right? So which one would you rather search? This one, of course. So the 2, 3 tree maintained its shape and balance when I inserted these values, that I did not. So this is 100% this is the reason why we want this instead of this.